Today I'm going to teach you how I edit my pinup photos. I use a combination of photo editing and digital painting techniques to create photos that have the flavor of classic pinup paintings. For today's example, I'm going to walk you through how I edited one of my Harry Potter inspired pinups. I'm using Photoshop CS5 and I edit with a drawing tablet, but that's completely optional. It's just more comfortable for me. Also, I want to note that I am a self-taught photo editor and my process may not be the best process. This is just what I do. First, open up your image and crop it to your desired size. I base my pinups on existing illustrations, so I always paste in the original and then lower the opacity so I can match the two images and crop based on that. I find that the background is the true key to making my pinups look like paintings. In a lot of pinups, including this one, the background is simple and flat so that the figure can be the focus. First, I add a color adjustment layer to get the right yellow. I use the magnetic lasso tool to mask out the figure so the color only affects the background. My crop is wider than my original image, so I use content-aware fill to give myself something to work with. This feature is really hit or miss, so if it doesn't do what you want, you can always use the clone tool like I'm doing here, or even just copy-paste parts of your existing background. This is a good time to clean up any edges that the magnetic lasso tool missed or messed up, and to mask out any bits that got left behind, like in my case, the Amortentia bottle. The background is the right color now, but it still doesn't look like a painting because my backdrop is all wrinkled. First, I use the clone tool and the patch tool to clean up some of the wrinkles close to the body. You could clean up all of the wrinkles manually, but I prefer to eliminate most of the background and create my own with a more painterly texture. To do that, I create a new layer underneath my image and use a textured paintbrush to mimic the original painting's background. I'll link to the free Photoshop brush set that I use for this in the description. If there are any harsh shadows in the original, I find that creating my own textured shadows is a great way to drive home that painted look. I use the eyedropper on the reference image to get the right shadow color and then paint in the shadow on a multiply layer over the background that I created. You'll note that I leave the reference layer on and paint blind for the first few strokes just so I can get the right shape. Just a note, all this painterly stuff is easiest if you have a drawing tablet with pressure sensitivity. If you're working with a mouse, I recommend starting with a low opacity and building up layers so that your strokes look more natural. Now we have to combine that painted background with our photo. First, I make the color adjustment layer into a clipping mask so it only affects the original photo, not the new background I made, since that's already the color I want it to be. Then create a layer mask on the photo layer. Grab a soft edged brush and roughly mask out the background. Don't worry about being precise here, we're not going to get right up to the edges. Instead, just soften the edges enough to make it easy for them to blend in. If it isn't quite blending, try adjusting the brightness until it matches up better. You may also need to tweak the color adjustment layer or the background. You can also use the dodge tool on the photo to correct small dark patches. There might also be some areas where you do need to precisely cut out the figure just like with a full composite. Basically, just fiddle with it until it starts to look right. This will probably be super time consuming, but in my opinion, this is the most important part of these kind of images, so it's worth making sure you get it right. Once the background is set, you can get to work on the figure or whatever other changes you wanna make. I did a bunch of random stuff on this image. The stockings I used for this were much darker and more opaque than I wanted, so I used the dodge tool to simulate a thinner material and better show the curves of the legs. Next, I did some beauty editing on the face, just the usual stuff. Blending the wig hairline, lightening bags under the eyes, cleaning up blemishes, the same kind of touch-ups you'd do on any image. I made the leftover Amartensia brighter and added some drips, and since I couldn't find a long enough wig for this look, I created some additional hair. This is actually super hard to do realistically, and I don't recommend tackling it unless you have some painting experience. I added some more paint textured shadows under the legs, adjusted the red of the pillow and the Gryffindor tie to be more vibrant and to match each other, and then added an overall brightness and contrast adjustment layer to make the whole image better match the original. This particular edit took about an hour and a half. One thing that I often experience with composites is true for this type of photo edit too. 
Sometimes it won't start to look good until you're an hour into it. This is more art than science, so you'll get better with experience and don't get discouraged if it takes some time to get right. Good luck and happy editing!